All right, look, the data is clear. Sometimes the value in doing hard things is that they're hard. In other words, making things easier doesn't always make them better. It's true, the data shows us quite clearly. Struggle and challenge are what give us meaning. So sometimes when you're doing something hard and you make it easier, you're actually making it worse. So are you don't avoid the struggle telling people they should sign up for these man camps? No. <laughs> man camps. <What? laughs> no. Although I think they that they the guys that come out of that who are like, oh, that was valuable. That's why it was valuable. It was just they haven't done something hard. hard yeah. In a long time. It, it, it's been a long you, time since they did something. You guys hard. they're they're popping it up left and right right now. Yeah, it's because, dude, it's it's the same reason why you know obstacle course racing became so popular. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Listen, it's also why video games are so popular. With I saw men. that. Oh, I shared that with you. You're the one that shared it with me. Yeah, that's right. I shared it's it because, you. you know, we're wired this way. The data on this is so... Arthur Brooks talks about this all the time. In order to find meaning and purpose in your life, there's a formula. And part of that formula is you have to do things that are challenging. You have to overcome challenges and find struggle. If everything's super easy all the time, you'll actually be in hell. Yeah, mm -hmm. Even if you have everything that you want, yeah. you'll actually be in a place that is conducive to things like anxiety and depression. So you have all these young men, especially young men, you brought up the man camps, where they, they, they don't realize that they have this yearning for something. And so what do they, what do they waste their time on or spend their time on? Challenging video games. Mm -hmm. And they get a little bit of that, right? That little bit of that satisfaction. Like, oh, I just, I just overcame that level. I just beat that, that boss or whatever. But um, no, we're wired this way. You got to seek out challenge if you want life to be meaningful. In other words, it has to be hard. You can't have uh, an easy life, which I, is weird. I think that's a good measure too for the young men and older men, I guess, that are still into video games. I remember when we, we did that clip last year. When you're playing a video game, what you're doing is you're satisfying this need Except you're actually not doing anything. Yeah, right? you're you're the, simulating the purpose what leads nowhere. You're simulating something you're supposed to do in real life. In real yes. life, one of the things that I think has made me the most success in my life was cutting off that. Yep. I remember, and I've told the story before yep. on the podcast. Same. My buddy, who was about five, six years older than me, who was teasing me when I was still in my late twenties, still fucking around with video games, and he kept looking at me like. When do you drop this? And in my head, I'm like, I have my house. I make six figures and I play video games. Like I got it all figured out. And he's like, bro, you understand how much that's keeping you, holding you back from reaching your real goals that you say you have in life. And it took me a long time for that to really make that connection. And it's silly because when I think about the math on the amount of hours per week that I was putting into playing conquering levels yeah. and beating people online, if I just replace that with books, just that, that, that's it. Just trade the hour of video games a night for an hour of reading something that is going to teach me a skill or make me better at my craft. Holy shit, did that accelerate my financial growth. That, and that's all I needed for that switch to go off for me. Then I went, oh, okay, light so, bulb moment. Boy, did that ruffle some feathers. <laughs> right? Yeah. Heaven forbid yeah, you tell. I know. The, and I get it because I was that guy too. Like I, I said the same thing. I will never not play video games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I guess if 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 you are making sure that you are going out and doing hard things and, and challenging yourself and stretching yourself then and you find that you like to escape a couple times a week into your favorite video game, I don't see a problem with that. But you also have to be self-aware enough to be honest with yourself and say, Am I, am, is, it, is the reason why I love this so much and I play it every day or every night is it because it's the only thing in my life that is giving me purpose or that challenge? And is this a healthy behavior? And if so, it needs to be addressed. Otherwise, I'm it's I'm I'm going down a, a path that um, leads to probably a, a very unhappy what? Uh, life. I remember talking to um, people who had which we we went to the first obstacle course race we went to was how many years ago was that? It was a Spartan a few, race. Yeah. We ran out of gas? Yeah, so like no, yeah, five. that one maybe. Was, the, the, we ran out of gas? Ran out of was gas. that the first one? You're the only guy I know. <laughs> 
who's yeah. actually ran out of gas twice <laughs> in their car. <laughs> we were there, I didn't even know that happened with, anymore. With digital gauges. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Brand, brand new car, yeah. That's nobody who does Pushing that. Pushing that limit, dog. Yeah, I'm looking bro. for challenge. Grown men. I'm looking for challenge. What happened, you guys? <laughs> we ran out of gas. We got Why? 13 miles to the gallon, <laughs> or we got 13 miles left on our tank, and we got 16 miles. Can Two we times. do it? Can we do it? It's happened yeah. twice. We could do this. But I remember talking to people at the race, because I had this, this perceived, you know, this kind of misconception or whatever. And then we get there, we talk to these people, and it's like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I... Computer programmer. Yeah. I'm like, why'd you do this? A lot like, of desk oh. jobs. They're like, it makes me feel alive. I feel so good. And remember, Spartan races, they're like jumping in freezing cold water, dragging themselves through mud, running through wires of electricity and climbing mountains and doing crazy stuff. <clears throat> hmm. Many of them getting injured. I mean, it's hard stuff. And at the end of it, they're like, I feel alive. It's because we need to have struggle. So now we have to like create, and here's what's weird. This is the, this is the strange part. If we don't, allow ourselves to do hard things, we'll turn easy things into hard things. Yes. All of a sudden, you'll create drama and stress and shit in your life and with things that you probably shouldn't have, drama and stress. Yeah. It's like we need to have this so much that we'll invent it and create it in ways that are unhealthy. So do you think so that- So frustrating, but true. So true. do you guys think like- This is, we're going to piss some people off right here. So do you think like the video games thing that the Spartan and OCR racing has become just as much of a fake outlet? I think it's or do you it's, think it's, it's actually temporary? I think it's temporary, but it's much more of an outlet than video games. It's at least much healthier, yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because I mean it's a bigger challenge. It's physical mental, it's, physical exertion. You're out in the in the in the elements. There's also a social component. I know video games has that as well, but it's like a real social component where you're with other people. Okay. Um, but is it the same thing as like um, you know, learning a new skill, uh, challenging yourself out in the real world, um, you know, raising kids, you know, that kind of stuff. Probably not, probably not, but I, I would definitely put it as, as a, as a better tool. Cause I, I know people that have that gone down that, that direction too, that are like the desk job people. They found Spartan and it's like, they are collecting those things like yeah. crazy. Like they're yeah, entire they got the trophies and everything. I mean, some people that's a huge deal. Like the trophies is a big incentive. My you know? fate, one of my favorite, I've brought this up so many times on the show. So people are probably sick of me, but my favorite like segments or clips of any movie was in the original matrix, which by the way, is a very, there's a lot of wisdom, philosophical wisdom in the matrix. If you really watch it, yeah. and listen, there's a lot of spiritual wisdom in it, that, that, and that's probably why it was such a popular movie, but there's a scene where they've captured uh, Morpheus, and they're trying to get him to, to give them the codes to uh, to the, the whatever the humans are, are hiding, and uh, Agent Smith says to him, like, the first Matrix that we built was a utopian. perfect utopia for humans. Yeah. And he goes, and but your feeble minds couldn't you know process it, and it just we lost crops of humans, so we had to create this this version of humanity, the late nineties, you know, because we need to have struggle. We can't put us in this like perfect utopia where we get everything because we find ourselves miserable and unhappy, yeah. you know? And this is a, I mean, look, this is why, one of the reasons why, um, pornography is even an issue. It's like in the, it, the way it used to be is if you wanted to have that, that sexual conquest, like you had to, you had to go through the gatekeeper of a girl actually wanting to have sex with you. You had to actually go out and try and, and fail and get rejected and like change a little bit and act differently so that she wants to date you and be with you. Uh, whereas now you go on the internet and boom, you get that sexual release, but then it causes problems because it's no challenge in it. It's just, it's just right there. It's just the, the, the finish line. Yeah. yeah and we have a real hard time accepting this, right. Uh, or owning it, you know, like yeah. I, I was so blown away. I saw that our friend Tom Bilyeu interviewed, Jordan Peterson. And he had texted me beforehand, like, Hey man, I just wanted to let you know, I got Peterson. I saw your guys's interview with them and got some really good stuff to ask him afterwards. And how was it? And we were talking before it happened. And I just saw that it went live. And so I, I went over to his page just to see like what, what people were saying. And my God, the amount of people that have that just refute and want to challenge and just condemn yeah. him for what he's talking about it blows my mind uh, when he's talking about the problems with masculinity in our society and the things that, and it's like the amount of people that get so upset and angry about him communicating that is mind-blowing to me yeah. like yeah. either one you easily can just be like oh that's not me like i i, I don't struggle with that or it's that triggering very yeah and it's obvious by the comments like you just like well we've been conditioned to 
think that if anybody, even if it's just one point of reference of like something he said that you don't agree with, then you have to dismiss and discard and oh, turn him into an enemy and the, and Satan, you know, and that's like in politics and that's, it's reinforced in uh, the way that we interact because of social media. And, and so it's like, you know, you can't ever, you can't ever say one thing that's um, in opposition to your philosophy or the way that you perceive uh, the world. And, and it's, it's a really dangerous uh, place to be mentally. Well, did you to see that? The, did you see the thread that Sal and I got into on our forum? No. Oh, you didn't see oh. that? Yeah. So I roped him in. <laughs> He's like, why'd you rope me into that? Yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, cause we get this every once in a while, even in our own private forum, you know, we had Dave Asprey on the show. And heaven forbid. We, oh, that thread. Yeah, yes, heaven forbid we have Dave Asprey on the show. Why'd because, you give him a platform? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Turn yeah. off the, 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 don't listen. Right. What do you mean why'd I give him a platform? So ridiculous. And and this this idea that uh, we that you could even build a business like this where we have, what are we interviewed? 400 people by now, Doug? Close to that? Uh, At least yeah. 200 and something to 400? Mm -hmm. I would no, think it's, it's up be there. Closer to 400. Right? 400 people? Like, yeah. Could you could you imagine trying to find four hundred people to come on the show that you agree with everything they say? Get the fuck it's out impossible. of here! I don't even agree with you. Everything you guys say, I, I know. And, <laughs> and imagine how unhealthy that is for you Actually, to only talk self, to people that agree with yeah. you. Like that, that, talk about a recipe for not having any personal yeah. growth in your life to not challenge your own belief. To me, that's right. like that's something that I have, I have learned to you know, you know to hack into growth is to. When I don't like somebody or when I disagree with somebody, instead of deplatforming or not giving them a platform, it's like, you know what? I'm going to embrace this. Yeah. I don't think I like this guy. Explain I don't think yourself. I agree with a lot of them. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if I, if, if, and it's, let's see if after that conversation, my, my bias is confirmed or let's see if my mind is blown and I'm wrong. And guess what? More times than not, I'm fucking wrong. I've been wrong. And so this idea But what's of, weird is that it's that it's not weird. I think it's human nature. You don't want to be wrong so badly that being wrong like threatens your very identity. So you don't even want to be in a situation yeah. where you could potentially like self-protection that way. You have to embrace it's weak. You have yeah. to embrace you know why I like being wrong? Like I, why I like being surprised that way? Because now I've learned something, right? La now I can be like, I believe this. I remember one of the first times this happened on our podcast, in the very early days, I said, I made some comment about childbirth. And I said something along the lines of like, uh, thank God for what Western medicine, modern medicine, because childbirth used to kill so many people, so mm -hmm. many women, blah, blah, blah. And a midwife in our forum comments and said, that's not true. Mm -hmm. She's like, uh, actually, natural childbirth is very safe, this, that, and that. And I, and I talked to her for a second, and then I did some research, and I was like, oh, my God. Like I was so wrong and I loved it. I loved the fact that I was, that I could yeah. learn something new, but we need to, we need to embrace that. I, you know, one of the things I like about uh, exercise and strength training in particular, just because it's the way it's oriented is that if you do it long enough, you have to learn how to like that because <laughs> yeah. You're going to do new exercises. You're going to it's, suck it's at them. Hey, it's going to teach you whether you like it or not. <laughs> if, you won't be able to stick it. with it. That's it. You're not going to be able to stick with it. If you're afraid of sucking, this isn't for you because you're going to suck yeah. and you're going to suck all the time. Every time you try a new exercise, every time you work out with a new person, every time you hit a new plateau, whatever, you're going to suck. And so it's like this new challenge, this new hurdle. But I mean, the data on this is super clear, but at the same time, like if, if you were to tell me, Hey Sal, uh, I could either give you $10 million right now, or you could struggle and grind for 10 years to make $10 million, which what would you choose? Like, I'd be lying if I didn't say I'll take the $10 million right now yeah but the truth is which one would be more valuable right. which one would would develop me into a, a much better person there's no there's no comparison yeah at all and again the data on this is super clear I actually i've had this conversation with my daughter and i said we were talking about um like fame and uh popularity and money and that kind of stuff and i said honey i said look at the suicide rate with celebrities I said, why are they committing suicide? There's, they got so much money. They have so much power. They have so much fame. All these people say they love them and this adoration and they're killing themselves. Why? I said, because that is not, that's not God. That is not what you're supposed to worship. That's yeah. not everything. Yeah. That's uh, actually a path towards destruction. If you start to worship that stuff and, and, and hard and struggle is it's, you know, good or bad. It's baked into the formula of, of, of happiness, unfortunately, or fortunately.
Today's YouTube giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, two days left for our huge fitness sale this month. Maps performance is half off and our extreme fitness bundle of workout programs is also half off. Again, only 48 hours left for this promotion. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Also, we have a brand new MAPS program, MAPS Performance Advanced. This is a hardcore, athletically-minded workout program for strength, speed, power, agility. There's also segments in there for specific types of athletes. For example, there's a segment for grapplers, which is pretty cool. Anyway, if you sign up during this launch period, it's on sale, plus you get two free ebooks. So check this out. If you go to mapsp2.com, use the code PA Launch, you'll get $80 off. You'll get a free ebook, Grip Strength Reference Guide. You'll get Eat for Performance Guide thrown in for free. And again, don't forget, this program is customizable. This is our most advanced athletic training program ever. And uh, ever. So go check this out. Were you uh, were you in the studio this morning when I was talking to the guys about uh, writing a note to my twenty year old self? No. Oh, you were. Oh, so no. I do this every once in a while, and I think this is a good exercise. I also hope one day I, I've collected all these notes and I have them for when my son approaches this. But sometimes I'll do this when I'm ha I have a thought, like thinking back, like oh, I wish I would have known this. So you or, literally write yourself. A yeah, note? yeah, yeah. Like I like I got like a nine forty or ten o'clock at night. I'm just weird. To like, twenty year old Adam. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, and, and again, it's like, is it know, stuff like, Hey dude, you're going to get way hey, more bro. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, I know this. Trust me. This was like, you uh, actually get more and I, handsome. you know, I don't <laughs> remember however handsome you think yeah. you are. Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, normally it's because Katrina and I are in a conversation or that's an, or, it's a very interesting practice. Yeah. It's, I, I like it. Reflective. I like good. it. And it, it, one, well, it helps me, yeah. you, you know, reflect myself. And then also I think it will serve me as in fatherhood. Right. Like when I, when the time totally. comes to like communicate. So this was the, the tip of it. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm setting you guys up to see if there's something in on top of mind for you or that you've thought about recently. So you can think about it while I'm telling you, but it was a financial tip. I would give my 20 year old self. I said, it said, uh, build as much passive income to support all the materialistic things that you want. Mm -hmm. Resist the temptation now. So that was the advice. And I think back to like in uh, something along the lines of like, you know, I, I probably would have arrived where I'm at financially a lot sooner had I resisted those temptations when I was 20 years old, you know, uh, and, and Doug was, you know, trying to, yeah, but you enjoyed a lot of that in your 20s. I said, yeah, I agree. I think, I think, uh, and I'm not saying that I would have not done any of them or I would take back all of it. I just think that if I, if I had, somebody that was mentoring me financially, I probably would have made some moves differently and I would it, things would have been even better financially sooner mm -hmm. than what it is now. And uh, the, the stress of building enough passive income to support these materialistic things that we like, not to mention what I've learned in my 40 plus years now is when I've learned to delay gratification on materialistic things, many times I don't even want it. Like I I, I've told you about that practice before where I have a rule where if I have this impulse, like, Oh, I want to buy this. I don't tell myself, no, I go tomorrow morning. If I still want to, don't you like, didn't you say you put it in your cart? Yeah. And then yeah, you wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it in the cart. I'll go through the whole process check it out next day. And then I won't check it you out. Know, you know what, by the way, what you're saying is so true. Do you know how much money, how much more money Amazon made when they allowed people to click one button, one to buy? Button, one click. Yeah. That simple, like, instead of having to it's, click twice. That was a groundbreaking feature. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Just a little bit of like, let's get these people right when the impulse hits. And that, and it's such a, yeah. it highlights the point, right? Yeah. Is that we we're, we all are these emotional creatures and we react on things like this so often. So that's how I, de that's how I determine whether it's something I really, really want and I maybe deserve or, you know, why not indulge? I mm -hmm. have worked hard to have these things. And so if I can just wait the next day or whatever, and I tell you what, nine times out of 10, I don't. Nine times out of 10, I don't buy. Like, I almost always put it in the cart. I, I want to see what this cart looks like. What's in there? I'll, I mean, whatever. I'll tell you. There's all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I'll tell you the next time I put something in the cart and I don't. I'd love to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll you tell don't you. go through and delete it. You just leave it there. No, it eventually gets yeah, deleted. Eventually. Yeah. You yeah. know how many times I've, I've almost bought, almost bought one of those salt shotgun shooters that oh, shoots, yeah. uh, shoots uh, flies? Yeah. yeah. 
I almost buy them. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm gonna be shooting I almost saw one of those at Ace. So I, was, yeah. I saw that and I was like, oh, that'd be fun. And by by no means, by the way, am I perfect still? Because I still make. I mean, I've got a drone that I've flown like twice. You know what I'm saying? So I've got <laughs> yeah. I've got some you know I've got some Oculus goggles that I haven't worn for. So I definitely still. I just bought a tracksuit. <laughs> did you really? I, did, bro. I bought. Hey, I bought. You know why? You know that Adidas jacket I have with yeah, the, you're stripes, the You're right? the tracksuit guy. Jessica made a mistake, right? She told me it looked uh, attractive on me. Like, uh, like if, uh, ladies, if you tell your husband something looks attractive on him, expect him to buy five five more of those things. But anyway, I went on Amazon like tracksuit. What's on there? Can get you like a velvet one. Or and something. I found a couple like it looks like a Russian mobster. You know, so I just <laughs> yeah. ordered, I ordered one of them. So where it's coming up? I mean, back to how this started, right? Like yeah. the twenty year old South thing. Do you guys? Uh, and maybe you don't think of it in the same uh, context of like talking to your old younger self. Maybe you think of it more of stuff you plan to tell your son, you know, or your daughter. Yeah. Are there things that go through your head that? You know, you, maybe, and you haven't reached, I know Justin, your, your boys are getting older now and maybe you're having yeah. more of these types of conversations. Are there mm -hmm. things that you're like, you know, my parents really didn't talk to me much about this. I'm, this is going to be an area where I focus on. Do you guys think about that? Or is there something like currently right now, like that you're going through with that? All the time. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I, half the time I feel like I'm talking to myself, even with, especially my youngest, just because he falls into the same traps. Um, and a lot of it is it's, it's self punishment. Uh, and it's, it's very much, um, guilt driven. Um, mm. and so a lot of, uh, decisions shame. turned into, yeah, because of shame, like promote like, um, ways that they're trying to make up for that. And then, and show, um, you know, that they're, they're, they want to get acceptance and they want to, you know, get back in on the good side of things yeah. uh, as opposed to really like, owning the mistake and then just moving beyond it and not mm. holding on to that and like repeating those same patterns. That was a big issue for you me. You know what's I So that was, that's a big one for me. And, um, I, the, what helped me was to think about like when my kids do make a mistake that they can't help themselves, like an easy example is like my three-year-old, three-year-olds are, are <clears throat> impulsive, right? So he'll do things like <laughs> if there's a cup on the table and he's running by, he'll like knock it over, right? <laughs> just impulsively, right? <laughs> He can't control himself, right? And then he feels bad about it, whatever. <laughs> but so, so my, what's my point with that is I want to help him correct the behavior, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's like some terrible kid. Right. He can't control it yet, right? Yeah. So I'm like, can I flip that on myself for stuff I've done in the past? Because there's things I've done in the past where if I if I think about it, it's all about shame, yes. right? But then I was educated, and the person I I I, I talked to about this stuff, she's like, you you're you're judging yourself with what you know now. So you're looking back to when you were however old, 17, 20, you know, 30, and you're looking at it with the wisdom you have now. You had you you were doing your best back then. That doesn't excuse it. You're still trying to improve yourself. Yeah. But the sh it takes away the shame. And if you don't take that away, man, that shame will drive you in ways that are not beneficial. You also, treat yourself like somebody that doesn't deserve, deserve to be treated well. There's also like a bit of wrinkle in this too, like when you're talking about your kid because you also don't want to potentially stifle something that could be a superpower for example your point you're talking about is it's interesting you brought that up i was literally talking about you and kyle last night to katrina and we're talking about leadership and i was telling her one of my favorite they traits. talking about glutes <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. like, they, have they have that in common too <laughs> yeah. they have that in common too no i was talking Glute about brothers. I, I was talking about uh actually the things that remind me about kyle that are, are similar to justin and i said you know one of my favorite traits about justin and i and i remember this as far back as us first working together is that I never had to, I never really had to hold him accountable to doing something or I ever had to reprimand him for making a mistake because he was so hard on himself and you could see that. And it was mm -hmm. like, the last thing you want to do to someone like that is to like tell them how add bad, on top of yeah, it. add on top of it. It's like, they're already beating themselves up harder than I ever could. Why would I want to add to that? That'll only send them off the edge. So that's also kind of a superpower of yours. So it's like. You know, and then you say, so, and you don't want to kill that in your son, right? So it's like, yeah. that's a, that is also probably allowed you to excel in a lot of things is that you are so hard on yourself. You hold yourself. So it's like, how do you right. teach him to have forgiveness? That's, you know, you I know, thought the same it's a thing. It's balance. Yeah. I, I thought the same thing, but actually it's, it's hindering the, yeah. the pro growth side of him is still there. The beat yourself upside is mm. actually slowing down the growth mm -hmm. because you're focused on the, what I did wrong. And, oh, and, uh, but the growth side's still there. It's still growth minded. 
So it actually becomes a hindrance. That's that, that was something I had confused. It's like, okay, well, what, am I going to become less effective? So I think that's what I mean, though, right? Is like, so you teach the like, how do you do that? You forgive yourself, yeah, because you don't want, like I said, you don't want to stifle his ability to look inward like that, yeah, right? Yeah, he's yeah. he's he's so fixated on it. You were so fixated on your mistake yeah. that you you recognize it, you own it, and then you pivot and you fix it. The, the the crippling part was that you let it fester or you you continue to beat yourself. Where it's more like I fucked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You own it. It's like, I'm going to get better at this, but forgive yourself and move on. Yeah. And so it's like learning to teach him how to do that. Well, and it too, I think a lot of things I've had to learn is that, um, you know, part of that is you internalize the dialogue. And so like you're fighting all that just inside you. Nobody knows, you know, and like, so I'm not good at communicating any of that or like getting help or like getting other people involved in a situation like that, because now it's like, this is all my problem. You know, and mm. so I have to like work my way out of it. It was always just me working my way out of really difficult spots when, you know, I've actually pulled people in. It makes it so much easier. And then I move forward and then yeah. I'm not like taking forever to like, uh, you know, just drag myself through the, the, the grind of it all. Um, and, and so too, I like it. And that's why I see, I see this when my son uh, is in sports and he's doing something and he's so frustrated because he can't nail this, uh, to the degree where he gets like a good score for it. And he thinks he's worthless now at it, you know, completely. And he's like, I just don't want to do it, uh, you know? And so I always had those, that was a hard thing for me too. Like it, I wanted to, to throw the ball the hardest. I wanted to do all the things, you know, at the level of the best player. And then, and, and I had to literally like take, practice every day and like work on each one of those skills like it never came naturally you know yeah. it was just it was a constant work thing so that's that's the good side but like i think um you know to make it more healthy would be to uh verbalize it because also too it gets it out you know because mm -hmm. for me it just it stays in and then i'm like I, i'm i have all of this stuff that's just like do you know you ever realize stressing me out you're yeah you, uh, this is this is a big realization where you have these thoughts if you don't verbalize them they circle you circle and they don't leave it stays in your body yeah, your berries it's, it literally it's like, is like right here in my stomach yeah. dude i tell you my, half my gut problems are are, for, are psychological oh yeah. i'm 100 percent same yeah. here i mean so now that they've connected the, the, the vagal nerve to the gut which is your cns for sure yeah, yeah which then leads to SIBO and all that stuff so then what happens you treat the SIBO goes away, comes back. Why does it keep coming back? Yeah. It's damn CNS stuff. What a yeah. great commercial for seed. Oh, yeah. Didn't you oh, mean, that was an accident. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's just such a great transition. It just, it just happens. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, geez, I didn't even know. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect you to go. Well, there. you know what? Okay, fine. You want to go in that direction. Um, probiotics help. They help the gut, but they also help the central nervous system. The, mm -hmm. the, there's data on this that shows that a, because there's, it's a two way street of communication, gut, brain, brain, gut, right? Yeah. And the right bacteria in the gut does communicate to the brain through neurotransmitters <clears throat> and other mechanisms we don't fully understand to tell the brain that it's okay to relax. So they find uh, that probiotics reduce anxiety and depression oftentimes in people. That's interesting. Which is, which is wild. Yeah. Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. You have your gut off and notice how you feel yeah. everywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's always interesting why we, we have these old sayings that have been around forever. Like, oh, I feel it in my gut. Yeah. I always Trust trip over gut. that. Yeah, that, I, I trip over that. There's three places that we that we feel when we talk about thinking something or knowing something. The, our head, that's where our brain is. Yeah. Our heart. Yeah. And our gut. Yeah. The most oh. serotonin receptors that we have are in the brain. Second is the gut. Third is the heart. Right. Right. All the serotonin receptors are in those three places. That's where they live. Yeah. And we, and for thousands of and, years, and we just, we've only recently discovered all that science. Like this has been, people have been saying this forever. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Like yeah. even, okay. So even right now, so I'm going through this RCIA process, right? So I'm going through and reading the Bible and stuff. And in there, it talks a lot about your heart. What's on your heart? What's on your heart? How did they know? Why, why did they say the heart? All, all they knew was it's an organ. Right. Did they even know it pumped blood? Maybe, I guess. Right. Why would they keep saying the heart? I love that. So you're, weird. I love that your yeah. nerdy science brain is going through all that stuff because that's an area where somebody wouldn't even think like that. That's such a profound thing in scripture. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh my God, like think about, think about yeah, how long in, ago like, this is written and that, that they're, they're telling you to follow. It's things. not even close <laughs> to like, I think we take for granted some of the stuff that we believe now, but who would think that? Imagine if this was 10,000 years ago and I'm like, you know, I, I, I love you with my heart. Like, huh? 
You're, my what? Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, just replace that's that the with organ another organ. The I love you with my lung. Yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah, why yeah. can't we see that? My kidney yearns for you, dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. So and then weird. we go in and we find all these serotonin receptors. Really weird. It is. I know. And, and I think uh, that makes me think of how we think the brain is so separate from uh, the body. It's like, man, it's all interconnected. No, inter and it's way more strange. You know, it's funny. I was just reading, speaking of the brain. Have you guys ever heard of blind sight? Oh, uh, blind sight? Um, no, I've heard of mind's eye. Sorry. I was okay. Really weird. I remember I, learned, I I saw this documentary once and they showed blind sight on it years ago. And then I was, I don't remember what I was reading. And it led me to reading more about this. So blind sight happens and they, they've documented this. So they'll have people have their eyes totally damaged. Okay. So they, they, they can't see they're blind. Their eyes don't work. And yet they'll put things in front of people and they'll mm -hmm. be able to determine. Describe it. They'll be able to de either describe it or determine which side it's on with far greater uh, odds than just, you know, so you random. you think that has to deal with something like electromagnetic waves or, or like some kind of like... Well, no. I, so they did they did brain imaging. Resonance. They've now done brain imaging. Oh, there's stuff going on there. I was yeah. going to say, I have a theory on that because I think that... In, we've oh, sorry. Sorry. I, I got it reversed. It's the part of the brain that's damaged that processes sight. So their eyes work, but the part of the brain that processes sight is damaged. Hmm. So they did brain imaging and what they found was other parts of the brain are lighting up. Uh, uh, so sight so isn't just about like this part of the brain. There's other parts of the brain that kind of tell you what's happening. How weird. Really weird. Ugh. And then that led me down this path of like how the brain compensates. And they're finding that when people lose like some parts of the brain atrophy due to dementia or whatever, other parts of the brain pick up. That's a weird one. Right? That's weird, dude. That's where you, you, you hear colors and... Uh, you smell sounds or whatever. It's all like this crossing of different senses at the same time. You ever seen interviews with people like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they'll yeah, say yeah. something like, uh, all right, when I say the number two, they're like, uh, pink and fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> That's wild. That's yeah. so, that'd be so weird. To well, I definitely think that when you have, I mean, this is like, I remember, I remember I was talking a lot about this when Max was first born. Right. And I just, when you, when you don't have the ability to use certain senses, the other ones tend to be yeah. heightened. Mm hmm. Because your your body just adapts in that direction, and I feel like you you see this like in people that are blind. Because that's where your focus is. Yeah, that's their own. That's the way they navigate through the world, yeah. and they they don't have this one. So then the other ones get hyper focused on, and so they so have they this. can allocate more resources in these yes. other departments. Hundred percent. It's interesting. We're we're someone who has you know sight, hearing, everything all working for them, right? They're it's evenly distributed somewhat, right, to all of them in order to do that. But get rid of your hearing completely, and all I have is my my set my smell and my sight to rely on yeah. i would think that those would be heightened because all that extra uh, priority is in the you know there's the, a famous music choreographer that's deaf she doesn't know that what? i can't remember her well, name beethoven beethoven was deaf right was he yeah, was yeah he had lost hearing he had but not he wasn't born deaf. not initially i don't think but yeah. he was born deaf I think, yeah. oh i thought he was born deaf. i didn't no, know that i thought he was born deaf. no well, there's this woman and maybe you can find who she is <clears throat> she choreographs music based off the vibrations that she feels in the floor yeah, see, I mean, that, talk about crazy heightened senses <laughs> yeah. to be able to do what that, right? And then there's the weird ones where like people like eat with their feet and stuff, like do weird shit. Like, oh, holy yeah, cow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can barely, I can barely. Some like, people have a real crazy dexterity with their toes, it, it, but that creeps me out. Dude. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, like, it's a little creepy to see, but it also know. highlights how fucking backwards we were as a society to throw shoes on our feet and to like eliminate We're that not even utilizing it as a practice it's it it's it's actually one of the the pieces of like obviously we get you know i don't i'm sure you guys get the same thing like lots of dms of like oh i'm gonna be a new parent what's your parent advice yeah. the barefoot. shoe the like barefoot one is like a go-to one right because i just yeah. don't think anybody really thinks about it and they think that's crazy to do that it's yeah you like, look at pictures of uh like yeah. hunter gatherers feet yeah they're all like this they're like the toes are all spread out and it's like all like muscly on the uh -huh. bottom, like yeah. oh my god, you could. And, and I, I think I feel so much smashed and hammered like mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I'm, I'm way more that. passionate about that after our experience with Doctor Brink and yeah. really starting to like. I don't know why before as a trainer I didn't connect those dots, but when I saw all the dysfunction in my own body and then I realized how much of it was stemming from my feet, it's like how many other people have all these pains that they deal with hip pain back pain knee Dude, pain the whole kinetic chain uh, and it's all from stemming feet. from the feet because they got these yeah. weak ass feet and it's all broken down all the way up yeah who is, is this that? is that the person doug i believe it's the person you're, you're referencing alexandria wayless isn't that cool yeah i'd love to see that uh, so along those lines I, was, I went down this path of like people with weird abilities mm -hmm. there's this autistic dude 
that he gets in a helicopter, they'll fly him over a city once, he'll land, and then he'll draw the whole city, buildings and signs what? and in detail with pencil. One time. That's he'll just so fly sick. over, and then he gets down and he draws out. And they were showing these huge like drawings that he did of just incredible detail. That's so wild. Because he just he saw one time. That's so wild. I know. I don't remember your name half the time. And this guy's <laughs> <laughs> I'm so you know, I'm like so obsessed with like figuring huh. out what my son's thing is gonna be. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like obviously I always wanted it to be sports. It's not gonna be sports. It's gonna be something else, right? And so I'm like, and as a dad, like that's all I feel like that's that's my job. My job is help foster. Yes, yeah. is whatever it is. It could be something I'm totally not into. Whatever. I accept that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm so obsessed with figuring that out, like what it's going to be. And like, there's this glimmer of like, oh, it could be math. He's going to be math. I love math. Like I was into math big time. And like ever since that numbers thing, like it's wild what I'm watching him able to he's do. He's super into it. Yes. Like, and it's progressing. That's it's great. like, oh my God, dude. Like, and, and he's asking Katrina, like, you know, Sweet. playing games with her where he's like, make it harder, make it harder. And he, really? And yeah, yeah. And she's, and she's challenged. She's like, yeah, I kept challenging him. And I started going like a thousand plus this. And of course it's still easy for him. It's like a thousand plus one, right? It's yeah. like, it's like still easy, easy stuff. And then she'll throw him like a real hard curveball, and it'll stump him. And then you oh. see him get like a little. See, fresh. look at that. That's the guy. Dude, that is crazy. Stefan Wiltshire. Is that his name? Stephen Wiltshire. Look how, look how detailed Whoa. that is. Look how detailed that is. And it's one time he saw it. No way. What? Yeah. That makes, you know, it makes you wonder um, how much our brains. How much we're perceiving. Yeah. Yep. Like yep. just, just every minute, like you're just like observing and, and uh, well, cause too, we have to be able to uh, discard a lot of information well, in order well, to. Well, you just, do this with, with studies. Yeah. I mean, I always. Not like that, bro. I mean, to an extent, you do. Hey, you know what? Do you yeah. not see how you do? Like, there's times I tell the story all the time. Because I don't remember anything else. When people compliment how smart you are, I'm like, he's really not that smart. I'm like, he's not. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. He's I taking go, all his directional. Yeah, uh, I go, listen, uh, Justin and I are resources. Smarter, but uh, you guys don't know that. So, like, we just read, remember studies. Yeah, I go, I go. We read the same study the fucking same time he does. <laughs> and then we get on the podcast, and then you would think that he's read that study 400 times and dissected it. I said, but he has this ability to regurgitate it. Uh, you do that. You, it's you it's can, valuable for podcasting. Yeah. You know, you, speaking of what your brain forgets, do you guys know that you always see your nose, but your brain makes you not yeah. perceive it? Yeah. Do you know that? No. Now, now you no, see it Now right look now. at your nose, yeah. And then- It's always in your, in, your, in your line of sight. It's always in your view, but your brain literally edits it out. Yeah. <laughs> so that you don't I didn't, trip that, up over that. That's a trip. Does that suck now? Well, that's like all those <laughs> visual- it now, Yeah, it? it's all those visual things that you just, you, you try to create or, order out of what you're seeing. <laughs> yeah. it, it in terms of like the data you've already acquired, right? Well, see, so this brings it all the way back to the, what I said at the very beginning, right? It's like, uh, I, this is what I wish I knew when I was a kid, but also this is what I still have to teach myself now. You, you really don't know what you need. You know what you want, but you don't know shit. You really don't. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. how many times have you gone through something and while you're going through it, you're like, this is the worst thing ever. This is terrible. And then yeah. when you come out of it, you're like, that was, I'm so glad I went through that. That was amazing. Uh, did you I, have I, no idea what you need. Have I, not, or we're bouncing back and forth between these topics, but you, you reminded me of somebody that has like a crazy talent. Have I told you guys, have you ever seen a LeBron James recall a game? No. If is you really, haven't, is he really crazy tell, the boys, tell the boys to find a YouTube clip of LeBron James recalling plays in the game. It's like one of the craziest. Is he, that? Is he like a bro, it's, genius about it? It is so fascinating to watch him do this. Draymond Green has a little bit of it too. Uh, LeBron, I think, is probably the most mm -hmm. talented in this I've ever seen. And he will, like an interview will happen. And this is post-game. Game's over. He's sitting there after the locker room. Game's been over for an hour, two hours. And the people are just like, hey, you know, the play down in the corner where you got the elbow, this and that. Was that the, the pivotal moment? And then he'll go, you mean, and then he'll recall like the, the previous like two minutes of the game, like play for play where someone was on the court, wow. who passed it first wow. and did what, that like to a T like that. We ran him the first possession. We ran him down all the way to two on the shot clock. Marcus Morris missed a jump shot, followed it up. He got it. They got a dunk. Uh, we came back down. We ran a set for Jordan Crawford. I mean, Jordan Clarkson. And he came off and missed it. They rebounded it. And we came back on the defensive end and we got a stop. They took it out on the sideline. Jason Tatum took the ball out, threw it to Marcus Smart in the short corner. He made a three. We come back down, missed another shot. And then um, Tatum came down and went 94 feet, did a roll step, and made a right-hand layup timeout. <laughs> there you go.
Huh. And there's other viral clips that I've seen since. I went down a rabbit hole of this after That's I was crazy. watching these clips. And uh, there's this great viral clip of LeBron James playing, I want to say it was the Cavs. Uh, it was another team. And he is on defense. And and the, the, they're run, the, they're, the, the team he's playing is running off and they're running a play. And the guy that is uh, guarding is right in front of him. And he's he's lost. He doesn't know where to go. And LeBron leans over and tells him his team's play where he's supposed to be. And then he, go, he goes, Tells run. him his team's Yes. Play. Yes. Oh, like, dude, that's the next level, right? Hey, there, what do you right? think oh. these guys were 5,000 years ago? They, right? Like they were the, all warriors, right? Had to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were to. all like on the field. Like, had to. That was your main Mapping warrior. out the battlefield. Yeah. 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 Bring yeah. out LeBron. Well, yeah. and they're built that way, too. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine him walking on out? A horse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Six, six, six two, two Goliath like, coming yeah. in, just yeah. slaying everybody. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. No, for sure. Hey, I wanted, to, I wanted to bring something up because you've made this comment on the podcast so many times, Adam. Oh, I would love to, like, do you really believe, I say this all the time, that, oh, Sal fans don't like Adam or, you know, whatever. Like, we all have. <laughs> fans that don't like the other coast because they're hardcore. One hundred percent. You think so? Yeah, I think we. So have, you think I have a group of hardcore fans? Because this isn't m most of our listeners tend to say they like the whole thing. Right? All of us, right? But yeah. but you think I have like I have a hardcore group that hates you or hates Justin and, and vice versa. Uh, Justin's not involved in this. It's you and I. Oh, uh, Justin. So no, no, I get. You know that's true. Everybody no, likes. No, 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 no. Everybody uh, likes you. Okay. I don't have anybody. Really? I don't think have, of one time somebody. Like uh, you. It's usually your fans. That's uh, not true. You have the worst fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been established. It's, it's been established. Well, it used to be when I would like, you know, interject with some joke and like get you out of your flow. Oh, oh yeah, boy. You know, like, oh, oh they hate that. They hate they, that. They let me know yeah, that. Your yeah. fans hate yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, your fans <laughs> are like, if you guys could just shut up and Sal let Sal was just talk coming up. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was just in this like perfect rhythm and yeah. I was getting so yes. much out of it. Then you just came in. Oh, yeah, no, I think so. This is this is how I think our audience is broken up. I think there is a, a large portion that appreciate the all four personalities and how everybody works together. And I would say that's 60%. And then that's I would, it? yes. No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Only 60. There's a big bulk of division. I think. And then, so there's that 60, right? They're like, everybody say equal. Well, it's like, I got a little, like I'm nerdy with sound. I'm, I'm like, of sports and, and all that and being cool, you know, I'm over here with Adam. So it's like, you know, I'm kind of split. Between well, that, so, cool. so the 40, yeah. the other 40, <laughs> the other 40% all like Justin. And then there's a, probably a pretty close, even split on that 40 of 20 of 20 are your people, 20 are my people. Mm, okay. And they all like Justin. And they hate each other. Yeah. And they don't like it. I don't know. hate's a strong word, but they yeah. don't like, like, they don't like me. You know, they don't like me and, or they don't like you. It's like, there's something about you that rubs them the wrong way. Just like something about me That's rubs your people the wrong way. You say you really believe that. Oh, I, okay. it's a fact. I know it is. Again, I, run a and I'd I think like it's the funniest that. when I get people that will like pile on you. Like, it's like, I, like, I really don't like you or something. <laughs> it is funny. It is funny. You got, you get like DMs of like showing, uh, videos of things of like, oh, this is like making fun of, uh, yes. Yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. I send this to Adam. Adam. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Adam's an idiot or Sal's an idiot. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's although it, it is, it is less today than what I used to feel. I, I did notice mm. that more, in the past, and I I don't know maybe the uh, maybe yeah. we've all become more likable in a sense. I don't know. I hope we're so. less hated. Hmm. Maybe Justin's it's, rubbing off on us a little bit, <laughs> or yeah, maybe those DMs have just been fine, buried. Yeah. So I don't see them anymore. <laughs> those people, I don't respond. calming you guys down a little, yeah. keeping it a little more zen. Oh. But it is. I do. Th I mean, it's funny because it's also what why the dynamic worked with building a business because we're we're just enough alike that we work well together, but we're enough different that we don't get sick of being around each no, other. No. Like we have this 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 connection and bond with each other because we have enough in common mm -hmm. uh, that we appreciate, but we're we're all very different. Totally. I mean when you think about all of every one of us, the things that we're into and like I, I think there's the I think the sixty percent that likes all of us actually thinks that we hang out all the time outside of here. Mm. We work out together, we go do things together all the time. And it's like I don't think people realize how much we yeah. kind of disperse and go Hold our hands and go, you know. Well we have we talk all day with each other. What do we do after work? I don't want to talk with you. I know. So that's so that's what you like, hey, call up Justin South there. What the fuck? No, I fucking see them every day. <laughs> I talked for six hours with those guys <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> about to say to them. I'm literally exhausted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, I want to I want to take a, a left here and talk about some more propaganda in the news. Did you guys see this article by the New York Post on protein intake that came out? Did you guys see it? Mm -mm. Did I share it with you guys on protein intake? 
Tell me. Here's the title of the article. You might be eating an artery damaging amount of protein <laughs> for breakfast. New study warns. For breakfast of all the meals so, they go after? This is so Who's annoying. doing that? You might yeah. be. So, yes. Th remember, when they say that, it means it's not true. What yeah. they're trying to do is either alarm people, get clicks, or there's an agenda, which I this believe. It's the laziest ever. Is there's an anti-protein anti yeah. agenda that yeah. is part of this the- may you know, pro-vegan, don't eat animal agenda. I think it's part of it, right? Now, here's the case is the case that the article makes. One is, and I hate this one because it's so dumb, is how protein stimulates uh, mTOR, mammalian target rapamycin, which is a, a growth signaler. It also makes cancer grow. So people will say, oh, if you elevate mTOR, you're going to get more cancer. That's not how it works. In a pro-cancer environment, anything that promotes growth any hormone that promotes growth, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. amino acids, whatever, can potentially fuel cancer. But in a healthy environment, pro-growth is fine. Yeah, mTOR is healthy. It's ideal, yeah. mTOR is healthy. It builds muscle, recovery, right? all that stuff. So that's we already know that's super debunked. But the other argument it makes is that if Americans eat even more protein, <clears throat> then they're going to eat even more calories and get fatter. That's the argument they tried to make, mm. which completely flies in the face of all the studies that show that hitting protein targets is one of the best ways to control yeah. calories. Yes. Period. It makes it easier. Yeah. Especially, that's what made me most infuriated about this, is breakfast. I the know. data shows a high protein breakfast yeah. reduces blood sugar spikes throughout the day, regardless yes. of what you which eat. Which is huge on its own. Oh, okay. And controls your appetite because of protein's satiety producing effects. So it's not just, again, misinformation. It's the opposite of what's correct. So mad. I find this like propaganda war Real. so interesting to me because I don't care how hard they try, they're going to lose. Mm. Time will tell. Like it, the, And it, I remember when the first, what was it? Was it What the Health or what was the Game Changers? Yeah, 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 when, yeah. The, when those came out. Um, well, thank God for new media allowing us to debunk and other people to go and, you know. You know, yes, down. but also- I was really surprised by the amount of people that that changed their eating behaviors yeah. after that. Mm -hmm. Like it was, I had people in my family and that I had no idea they're like, and then we're still sitting, vegan by the way. No. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. No. And, th and that's why I say like, go all day long. You want with this propaganda yeah. bullshit, go for it. Because I mean, because I know what we're talking about on here and I feel com comfortable that we, we are speaking out. We're using our platform to communicate the truth and help people. So I don't feel guilty about all the knuckleheads that fall for this trap. Mm -hmm. That if because the resource there is resources out there. There are people that are are sharing the right information that are trying to truly help you that aren't trying to scare you into eating a certain way. And if you're too dumb to figure that out or to go research or look look it up or ask questions like, hmm, yeah. that sounds weird or strange or counter from what I've heard or seen or noticed or feel in my body. If you're too dumb, then okay, then so be it. Eventually enough of those people that will fall into this trap that listen to this stuff will will come back full circle. They'll have yeah. to. I don't know if it's just because the last few years and just like seeing, just being kind of disappointed and depressed with, you know, how a lot of people like uh, got swept into a lot of the propaganda and all this, where it's just like, a, yeah, to your point, it's like, I, I started to think, I'm like, well, it's, it's, Pretty much survival of the fitness or f the fittest <laughs> survival of fitness. Yeah. I like That's that. a good name of yeah. a podcast. Yeah, it is actually. So, uh, someone's going to do that now. Watch. Yeah, I know. survival of the. You're fitness. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, that's that's just the thing. I can't I can't um, put it upon myself to change uh, somebody else's uh, mind or the way that they view uh, you know their reality. Like that's not my job. Like I have to just like live a good life and model what I can and, and see what happens, you know, with people around me. But yeah. it's just like, it, it's frustrating and it's, it's hard. It's the same conversation we have when a family member that you really want to get healthy and in shape, um, you know, what, what's the best approach. And it's like, well, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. It magnified. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that, um, along those lines, you said survival of the, of the fittest, the, the, if you look at the data, it's actually already happening. The, the people who kind of follow the tenets that we pr that we promote are the ones having more kids. The ones that are following the propaganda are so disenfranchised and mm. so upset and depressed and fearful or whatever, or or just they, they think that they're going to get value out of life by, you know, maybe it's better not to have kids. They're not having kids. Mm. So the reality is in a couple generations, 
they're going to breed themselves out. Did you, have you seen that? The data That's on crazy. that? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's been alarming. A lot of people have been bringing that up. Yeah. They're not, they're the ones not having kids. So I think you're right. I think we just got to wait it out. It is. It's a, it's a just hurry up and wait game because then eventually the, the, the numbers won't lie. The stats won't lie. We've already seen what happens when people go that way. And the best that we can do is to try and help by informing and educating like, Getting infuriated by it and I just, losing sleep over it. I just heard like, a spiritual. I don't know. Nothing good's come out of that. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I just heard a, a spiritual influencer say on social media. There was like a clip, and she's like, um, "They're like, what's the best diet?" I'm like, "Oh, this will be good. Let's see what she says." <laughs> and she goes, um, "Processed foods aren't good. The more alive a food is, the better it is." So I'm like, "Oh, uh, well, okay. I see where you're trying to go, okay. but whatever. Okay, so far right, I guess." And then she goes. And, but the more suffering a food went th through, the worse it is to eat. So she's like, ultimately, you don't want to eat animals. And I'm like, I, I see the point they're trying to make. Now, you can make the case for raising animals in a humane way and all that stuff. But the argument about it being like, if they suffer, it's not healthy for you. I don't know. Have you ever seen, I mean, do animals ever not suffer in nature when they get eaten? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I remember I had, I actually watch had nature's metal. Like let's immediately point them there. I yeah. had a, one time a friend of mine tell me that and say, Oh, you know, when they kill their beef, like the cow adrenaline's pumping through the meat cause they're going to die and then they die and it's terrible for you. And I'm like, I thought about it. I'm like, when do they not, ha when does that not happen when they die? Like yeah. there's a lion, like, trick him into falling asleep <laughs> yeah no and then yeah, like yeah. slowly kill that just like says, that that fucker's running for his life well, Justin says perfect watch nature's metal yeah, you, let me know how many of those animals look like they're they're it's, not under stress when they're dude, getting vicious <laughs> out there man it's scary yeah, yeah like yeah it's yeah to be a cow like in a pasture like that's pretty that's pretty awesome you're not that's not that stressed out no, uh, no, water no. buffalo or I, they I, take I, care I you, of them. if you if <laughs> You take nutrition advice from a spiritual fit or a spiritual influencer on Instagram. You deserve what you get. That's what I feel like. Oh man, <laughs> I know. I know. Anyway, uh, more a, a meta analysis came out on uh, exercise and depression. Another one. This was a big one, huge one. I really do see uh, tide changing in the medical world when it in regards to um, exercise and and depression. This was a big study, and uh, it says effects of exercise for depression. And this is the summary. Uh, for treating depression, various exercise modalities are well tolerated and effective, particularly walking, yoga, uh, jogging, yoga, and strength training. Effects were comparable to psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy. Exercise worked better when more intense, okay, across the board. So pretty cool. Now, uh, these are these. I think that they haven't got yoga far enough. Yoga can be intense. Say what? Yoga can jo be real intense. That's, yeah. that's, I bet that's a that's a that's probably a, a can we beach, franchise that's got to be a beach body workout <laughs> yoga yeah. it's got to be dude. oh my god there yes. for sure is they have like a yoga to hip hop they yeah, have something probably. for hip hop yoga hip hop yoga yeah, be, it's coming out. is that uh, yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day about the uh, did, did the strides business keep going does anybody know What's that was that? a big popular business for a hot minute there strides yeah it's like um, um, basically like workouts for moms and strollers. Oh, a brilliant concept. Yeah, Very brilliant. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I knew it was like hot. And, when, back when I was doing boot camps, it was it was like the big deal. Like, and I haven't heard much about it in the last. I don't know. And I wanted. I wanted did I ever to, tell you guys? Did I tell you guys my idea for? Not that I would, I'm going to do this, but I thought this would be cool. Imagine a gym, like a small gym, eight thousand square foot facility, and then in between the equipment are areas for kids, play pens and stuff, and then the staff is trained on working with kids and watching kids. So the kids are around moms and dads while they're working out. And it's that kind of an environment. Of course, you'd have to charge for it. It wouldn't be cheap. Mm. Yeah. But imagine a gym like that. I, I can see a lot of parents. I mean, I love what we're seeing. Dropping them off at the kids club. Like, uh, that's great. But I, could you imagine if your well, kids you see what next mom and dad's you? doing? Yeah. You, see, you awesome. see, well, yeah, I think that would be awesome, right? To see a parent. Well, I mean, they have the kids strong, which I'm super interested in yeah. their business. Yeah. And that's, those are popping up all over. Yeah. And one is I think, isn't that the one Margaret says is, uh, is Margaret has a kid that yeah. yeah her kid goes there and I know Brendan is an investor mm -hmm. I have another friend who's an investor in it and and they they teach them like more than just it's not just like oh go play they're like they teach them math and like they're they, they're teaching them all other. integrated yes oh wow yeah yeah so it's a it's a really confidence they teach them they're teaching them a lot of different stuff oh, oh they have it look at that it's called stroller strides yeah, yeah. stroller strides yeah yeah that's it oh, I mean that's a great concept. Yeah. It's, it is a brilliant concept. I love is it that. Is it, it's franchised. Is that right? 
Do we know? I, you know, it looks like a workout. So I don't know if it's a workout that you can pay for access to, but it seems to be for the, from this uh, Fit for Mom program. Well, so. isn't Stroller Strides? Isn't that it's a registered trade trademark? Yes. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's franchised. I don't know. Maybe Andrew. Can See, I so I it's really a dad think, version uh, with like it is franchised, plate, right? Plate loaded. Yeah. <laughs> like sleds, but you put the kid in there, or the seat. Well, it's, it's, it's on t- I think that there's a lot of parents who would even bring their kids to a gym like that who don't normally, who don't need to take them, uh, like have them drop them off the kids' club. But they're like, you know what? I want you to come with me. Like, imagine working out at a gym like that. Wouldn't you enjoy that with your sure. kids kind of, you know, amongst, you know, what you're I think doing maybe we should start you one gotta, of these you mute uh, that, stroller Doug. strides. You got to mute that, Doug. Maybe we should start one of these. What do you guys think? I can put it up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, you never have to leave your baby or your kids. Oh, it's not? Home. Okay. Let me yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not me. It's no, autoplay. Yeah. 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 So, what brilliant business model, though. Very brilliant. Oh, yeah. And you, But you remember it back when you were doing boot camps? Yeah. Camp. Yeah. Back when I was doing boot camps, it was like a, it was a bit, in fact, I had some uh, boot camp ladies that were like, that was the, the thing they were doing before they had found my boot camp. Mm-hmm. And other kids were like out of the stroller. And so I was training them. I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, have you not heard of stroller? I was like, what the hell is that? And I looked it up and I'm like, oh, that's smart. Mm-hmm. Like that's really, yeah. really clever. Like to to get, and it, you know, like you know, the dad market's not tapped in with that. I, I bet you that would be a market. That's what I'm that, saying, yeah, like, where dad can take his. Well, kids. they do rucking, right? Like it's a oh. big thing that's how mm-hmm. you imagine that you just get your kid and then you put like you know weight in the front. I mean, that's a great idea. Just that, but that itself, instead of it right? being in a stroller, you have them strapped to you and like you go, dad you hikes it. or something. Dad, like hike, that. Yeah, dad right. hikes and body weight squats. There's, I bet you, there's something. There has, be. there has to be. Yeah. There has to be. There has to be someone. And if it's not, it's an opportunity for someone to do. So. I think I, I brought this up in one Until of our. Until the kid has a blowout, right? And then <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, guys. Hold on. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we got a situation. Oh, Who's got a hose? Yeah. Get the hose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, while we were recording, um, Katrina DM'd or messaged DM, messaged all of us about Shallow's uh, thing still on. He's like confident that he's going to be able to okay. get enough people. Did to- we get that new link, Doug? Yeah, I'm looking up right now. Okay. Yeah, so I just saw. So, I mean, look, this is, uh, it's a great opportunity. First off, um, you're the first, how many people? 10? Yeah. First 10 people sit in on a live show. Um, We're going to do a meet and greet. And of course, in order to do this, you become a part of a certification course, which is if you want a comprehensive uh, fitness certification that teaches you like workout programming and biomechanics on a whole nother level, like- this is the doesn't one. get much better than that. No, it doesn't. And no. It's live. It'll be done in person. Oh, yeah, that's so he does time. these virtually. So you have the ability to do it virtually, but to have access to him personally and to come down to the mind pump. One studio. of the smartest people in fitness. Yeah, yeah. no, I, period, I, period I, I, I love story. shallow. What's that? What's yeah, that go to mindpumpl1.com. Mindpumpl1.com. Yeah, that's going on from uh, the fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth of March. Go come hang out. out. Look, if you want to try the benefits of CBD, use. Ned. Ned uses full spectrum hemp oil extracts that have CBD, but also other beneficial cannabinoids. Look, here's the deal. Other CBD products, you take them, you don't even know if you took anything. With Ned, you feel it. Literally take it 30 to 45 minutes later, you feel more euphoric, you feel less inflammation and pain, and you can sleep better. Go check it out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump, get 15% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Stephen from North Carolina. Stephen, what's going on, man? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Good. What's happening? Perfect. All right. First of all, man, I just want to thank you guys for the content that you guys put out. Um, I think you just make me a better husband, a better dad, and a brother, and a better brother, and so on. So, thank you. Thank Hell you guys yeah. for that. It's definitely, definitely improved my holistic outlook on not just fitness, but life. So thank you guys for that. Appreciate that. Um, My my question is, I'll turn 40 in July. I have the RGB bundle and I've cycled through the program with great results. I'm currently training three days a week, but during the summer, I noticed that when I went to an upper lower split, I was having better results with body adaptation, sleep, and energy. I recently transitioned back to MAPS Anabolic in an effort to gain some strength. I'm seeing great results, but noticed that my sleep was off. Last week, I added some drop sets and noticed a significant increase in my sleep and energy. What do I attribute this to? I'm not sore after working out, but I feel like my weight is progressing. What are your next steps for recommendations? And I kind of put some notes in here. My sleep, my, 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 my slow wave sleep and my deep sleep probably went up from three hours to about three and a half, four hours. My HRV was up about 10 points, pretty consistent with, with calories at around 3,000. 
And if I had to put a goal on this, um, I'd say my goal is just optimal health and longevity. Okay. I, I don't think the drop sets are what uh, improved your sleep. Um, so many things can affect sleep, including just lifestyle and what's happening during the day and, and temperature your bed. I mean, there's so many things that can affect this. I don't think a drop set, it's not like you went from not being active to being active. You were already active. Um, now, the occasional increase in intensity um, can induce some nice adaptation. Typically, though, you'll need to back off so you can go short spurts. Can right we peer, can we peer into that a little bit more though, Sal? Like, I do have a question around like your activity level outside of the workouts. What does the rest of your day look like? Are you pretty sedentary? Do you move? Do you walk? Do you track steps? I'm probably eight to ten thousand. I don't try to overdo it. I was I was overtraining there for so long, and, and I think you mentioned a couple of podcasts ago that if you had to schedule a deload week for anybody, in the, it would be Sal. And I kind of train like that. I train first thing in the morning three days a week, maybe one day a week, I, I do the sled, but not heavy just to, just to get moving, um, doing mobility on, uh, Wednesdays and, um, Saturdays, um, just to, just to, it's, I, I consistently wake up at five o'clock, just trying to be consistent. Just like I said, longevity is, is where I'm key. I'm not overdoing steps by, okay. by any stretch of the imagination. Now you said you're, you're, you're not sore, but you are getting stronger. For sure. Oh, for yeah. sure. Like my, I've seen my deadlift go up maybe five pounds or something like that. Um, I'm not sore at all. I actually feel energized when I leave, which is the feeling that I want. Um, I'm just trying to see what, you know, if I went from MAPS anabolic and then threw in some drop sets, wonder, I mean, there's all kinds of, I, mean, I realize there's all kinds of different variables, but I'm just trying to pinpoint from a training perspective. Is there something that I can mm, increase or add? No, I would I would follow up maps anabolic with mass performance for sure, especially if you're looking for longevity. Mm -hmm. um, it's the perfect follow program to maps anabolic. It's going to move you in different planes of movement. You're going to add some rotation. It's going to help with your joint integrity, um, and it's a very similar program in terms of uh, stress on the body. So if you respond well to maps anabolic, you'll do very well with mass performance. And, and it sounds like we're trying to speculate on what what like you know get to the bottom of oh, what gave me this great sleep. It's probably it's more likely something related to either nutrition or stress. Yeah, lifestyle problem. So I don't know what your your currently has happened at work or with your wife or anything anything like if if something like that that's more likely to have attributed to a good night's rest than uh, adding a drop set into your routine. Um, so and it'd be different if you were, and what Sal, and that's why I asked about the steps. Like if you were like this really yeah. sedentary person and then all of a sudden you went to working out, yeah. like absolutely that can make a, a major impact on your sleep, but you've already been doing all that and, and adding a drop set or an extra set or adding more weight to that. And then, then sleep being amazing that night, it's more likely related to personal stress that you have or don't have going on in your life or nutritionally like another thing the other thing too is like i i notice this when i make a choice to eat earlier in the night than when i eat closer to bed like when i give my body time to fully digest the food and i go to bed uh like hours later after eating versus eating really close to bed that makes a difference in how yeah. good a sleep i get so it's more likely something like that is is was what yeah, we attribute the consistency of like hitting that same time i go to bed and the same time i wake up like that that plays a massive factor for me as well if i interrupt that it tends to kind of like uh, throw everything off yeah and you know the, the other thing too steven is it, typically it's stress however it can also be excitement so people you know any change from baseline can affect your sleep. So, you know, if I have something exciting, like good, something good that's happening uh, the next day or the next week that I'm anticipating, that'll affect my sleep like stress will. So sometimes people just think it's, you know, something negative, but it can be something exciting, you know, like, oh my God, I'm going to go on vacation or, oh my God, I'm going to go do that interview I'm so excited about or whatever. Um, that'll, that'll affect anything that's outside of baseline can affect your sleep. The other thing to look for is, I don't know if you're a coffee drinker or not, but I know it's a huge difference on the days that I get my caffeine consumption earlier versus if I let it go a little bit out me drinking yeah. a, a caffeine drink like one. one hour or yeah. two hours later than I normally do will make a difference on my sleep that night versus me eating, getting it really early. Totally. So it, pay attention to those things too. If you're a caffeine drinker. Yeah, I think uh, uh, performance worked really well for me. Um, I think um, 
aesthetic was a lot, but I finally got through it. The caffeine I've kind of taken back before noon. So I have my last cup before noon and I'm probably somewhere between 350 and 400 okay. milligrams there. So don't really try to overdo it. But it was just when I, you know, I was doing anabolic, went through anabolic performance, aesthetic, and then I went to Joe DeFranco's SB91, SB911, tried that where it had some unilateral movements in there and got some some great results from that. So just trying to figure out what that next step was from, hmm. you know, I don't have a lot of stress at home. We're, I mean, we're, it, it, home life's great, job's great. I'm kind of in that sweet spot right now. So just really trying to just optimize optimize my health and longevity what about like old timey for him oh yeah i mean it's okay now that i know more about the programs you've done yeah do you like doing different kind of workouts too i love to be challenged i think for oh, me as long as i'm done challenged deal. and i'm yeah. working towards a goal yeah. done, done deal we're gonna you send you love this we're program. gonna send you maps old time you're gonna train like bronze era strength awesome. athlete yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, you'll love that and you've done some great it's programs with Joe's and ours. Like, yeah, see, now that we know that. This will be yeah. this will be something very unique, and so that'll that'll send a new signal. That'll be good yeah, for you're you. You're kicking ass, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You're doing yeah. real well, man. Man, I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, man. I'm trying to trying to be uh, – just trying to take uh, from you guys, right? Take little bits and pieces of, of learning experiences and failures and just adapt that, like I said, holistically. It's not just about fitness for me. It's, man, I got to be a great husband. I got to be a, 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 a great dad. Um, I've got a little girl also, so just trying to just trying to make sure I set the the good example for them and be a great leader at work as well. So wow. just holistically, Perfect. just want to be oh, a better yeah. person. Yeah, You'll love maps all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good exact, good, yeah, good, yeah. good suggestion. Yeah, I'd love to hear back from you as you go through it too. You'd be a great person to hear how how it uh, turns out. We're for gonna you. shoot that over to you. Yeah. Oh man, that's perfect. Thank you guys, man. I genuinely appreciate that. Thank you. You got Thank it, you, man. man. Yeah. All right. Have a great one. You yep. too. Thank you. Doug, will you also send him a coupon code for 50 off of 40 plus because of the lifestyle stuff yeah, in there? Good, he'll, I think he'd get a lot of growth from that. minded. I definitely like, yeah, he's a growth minded individual. You know, yeah. as we, as we continue to talk, you could just hear, uh, that he's, you know, being growth minded. It's like, you know, you're always going to get better. You're always going to improve. Mm -hmm. And, um, he comes across as that way. So that's awesome. And, and when we heard all the programs he went through, it's like a great mix. Yeah. You know? He's got a great foundational base. I, I do. I do want to continue the conversation a little bit between us on the uh, sleep. Sleep, thing, yep. right? So excitement will do it too. Because by the way, this I I totally. Uh, this is something I think about a lot, right? And they have these nights where it's just like, whoa, that was so good, or yeah. my score on my what aura ring, it? or eight. Yeah, and I'm, and and so the order I'm going through. Like one of the last things I think about was something I did in my workout. Cause that's, yeah. if I'm consistently kind if of you're like super overtrained then yeah. Yeah. So. Right. So it's so yeah, exactly. If I did something like that was really out of the norm, like, Oh, so I decided to do yeah. hill sprints, yeah, 20 or sets I, of squats. Yeah. Or, yeah. or I push myself like, okay, then maybe I'm, I'm looking, peering into that, but that's not normally what I'm doing. Cause that's relatively consistent in my life of like, as far as my training routine, intensity days, all that stuff like that is. So I'm like, okay. Uh, caffeine is normally a big one for me to look at yep. right away. Yep. Uh, did I eat? How did I eat the diet wise? Yeah. Diet wise. Was I on point? Did I close dinner out earlier? Also uh, getting ready for bed. You know, mm -hmm. did I stay away from electronics? I noticed the earlier I do that, the better. I know oh, yeah. we tell people just an hour or two before, but I, I noticed Dude, it makes the more, I get more sunlight. The, yes. Yeah. Yes. Did I go factor. out? Did I go outside? And it, so that's, I just want to give, I, I just, taking, I just remember specifically, even at this was, I thought of you, Adam, like there was a, there was a purchase you were going to make. I'm not going to get too many details but you were so excited you didn't sleep for like four days yeah remember yeah. you kept texting oh no i had terrible sleep like it was this thing you were excited about yeah, yeah. no it ruined my sleep yeah. for an entire week and so yeah so i'm so th those are the, like i'm checking that and i saw he was taking notes that's why i wanted to go over yeah. more with him so yeah. he can go like i'm i and i'm gonna go look at all those things and go like what what variables did i change last night that is most likely to have made that that greatest impact and the in, this intra workout stuff is less likely unless it was way dramatic right. or over yeah. over the top right like Good you point. said like overreaching shift, yeah. yeah our next caller is nolan from minnesota Nolan, what's happening how can we help you hey hey thanks guys i appreciate being on your show okay. um you got it but before we got started too i wanted to just say that you know i listened to your show and a lot of the content that you put out about um, just your lives of being fathers and even to just fitness and, um, you know, friends of yours, like, um, Dr. John Deloney, I love that content. And I think it's really, really good for uh, people like me as we try to find good, like male role models. So thank you. That's nice, awesome. man. Thank you, Appreciate Nolan. that. Nice, call nice compliment, man. Um, so essentially my question is I have been working out for about a year and a half 
And last year in the springtime, I started to work out with a trainer. And I worked out with that trainer until about December. And I actually started to use a MAPS program uh, since December. I'm on the end of, of anabolic uh, phase three, which I've really liked. My question is about my time with my trainer. So when I worked with them, um, we only changed like my, my block, my training block three different times. And I worked with them for about eight months. Um, so we did a six month, we did a six week block and then we did another six week block. And then I went into a cut and I was in that cut for about four or five months. And what they said is during the cut, we don't want to change anything with your training. And they were saying that the problem is that if you make changes, you could cause additional muscle tissue damage. And essentially you'll maybe lose more muscle during your cut uh, than you mean to. Um, basically what I'm wondering was that, is there validity behind that? If I do a cut again, should I be careful about changing my programming or should I stay with like a, how, how maps is structured where I'm going to have change ups more often? The opposite is true. Well, it's so Nolan, let me, let's, let me ask you this first. What, uh, did you get stronger? Did you see body composition changes? How did you feel during this period working with the trainer? Sure. Um, so when I initially started working with them, I got significantly stronger. I was also going though from like, I was in a home gym and then I started working out in like a, a big box gym when okay. I started working with the trainer and I saw like crazy big improvements, which I, I did like, um, well on my cut, I did stagnate, which over the course of those months, I didn't really get any stronger. I actually got a little bit weaker. Um, you know, when, when you're cutting for about four months, I probably lost about 15 pounds. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. Um, but you, but you yeah, saw so no strength decreases? No, yes, no correct. A little bit. No, okay. so, a little bit. Okay, so Just a little bit. A little bit. Like, not like major. It wasn't like major, but a little bit. But yeah. a 15 pound loss. All right. So, look, there's two schools of thought with this. Okay. And there's validity in both, in my opinion. One of them is let's, let's, control as many variables as possible. And then let's change the diet so that all the other variables stay exactly the same. And we know exactly what the diet is doing for the person. Okay. As far as, you know, excessive muscle damage, stuff like that, maybe, but really the validity has more to do with, we're going to make this change. Let's keep everything else the same and then change accordingly. If we need to, the second school of thought says we're going to go into a cut one of the best ways to send a louder muscle building signal is to switch up the workout, right? That novelty effect tends to do that. Now, the challenge with that, and here's why a lot of trainers don't go with the second school of thought. The challenge with that is knowing how to control the volume and the intensity appropriately. Because oftentimes when you change, you increase the volume, you increase the intensity, and then you also go on a cut. And now it's like, okay, am I too much of a cut? Like what's going on? Why isn't my body responding? Why am I getting weaker or whatever? Whereas if you control the variables, we can very easily see, oh, okay, the same exercise we've been doing for the last five weeks. Now we're seeing a slight decrease. Maybe the cut is too high or whatever, right? So they're, they're both good. They're both okay. I tend, later in my career, I would switch the workout up with the cut. But I also knew, you know, you know, just through experience where we would go. Like, you know, and I, I would always typically go with lower volume into the cut to kind of manage the potential muscle loss. But, you know, it, without looking into the getting real clear and exactly what happened um, with workouts, I, it, it would be hard for me to say if it was a right or wrong thing. I will say this, losing 15 pounds and seeing a little bit of a strength loss is not bad. No. That's not bad at all. You did pretty damn it, well. This isn't this isn't a right or wrong per se situation. Like it's not like uh, you know, I said to you the opposite is true, but by that I don't mean that what he, what he's saying is wrong either. It's not that like you can't do what you did because you obviously did that and you actually sound like you got pretty good results. So it's not a you know, this is the wrong way. This is the right way. I've done both with clients for a very long time and I've just had way more success by changing the adaptation up. And one of the ways that I love to show, and, and part of this too, which, you know, on our show, we're always talking about not just the science behind it, but also the psychological piece that come with, comes with it. Bingo. One of the most challenging parts about getting in a cut is losing strength because it's it inevitable or, or plateauing or just feeling weak. One of my favorite ways to show you strength gains in a cut is to introduce new movements. For example, if you've never done a 
barbell hack squat, right? It's a very unique exercise. So I just threw something out there that maybe you've never done before. And you and I, I was training you and we put you on a cut and I introduced that movement to you. The first day we did it, it's going to be difficult. You're going to be not very good at it. But I guarantee the very next day we do it again, you're going to be a little bit stronger. Even though then, you're in a cut. And even though you're in a cut. And then the very next time you do it again, you're going to be a little bit stronger. And so you get to see these yep. strength gains in the gym while we're depleted and we're cutting and you should be probably losing some strength. And so the psychological benefits of that, that is one of the most positive things that I've seen from that. And then I also think there's some value of you're you're incorporating muscles that you really didn't train in, in other planes or other exercises that you were currently doing. And so we are building some muscle too. So there's value of potentially building muscle in that cut, the psychological benefits of seeing yourself get stronger in the gym in something while you're in a cut, which is really difficult to do. And so I have moved away from what Sal was alluding to, which I, when I was a new trainer, yeah, you controlled everything. I wanted to control thing. every variable. And then if I tested it with a client, that way I could tell them, oh, it's because we're, we're cutting too much or we're not cutting enough right. because I didn't change any of these other variables. Well, now I've been doing this long enough that I know if I cut somebody by this many calories, I know what, what's going to probably happen. And then I also know if I change these variables in the workout routine, I also know what the benefits of that psychologically will be with them. And so I have forever moved in that direction. That, Listen, is that And that's how I train myself. Like if I am changing from a bulk, and I, I, it goes for the same in a bulk too. If I go to bulk or cut, anytime I transition diet, I also switch programming up. It just It's like a mental shift. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you, you can't, this cannot be overstated. You've been doing this for a while now, Nolan. So this is good. This is good advice for you. When you're considering all the factors with diet and exercise and lifestyle at the top, at the top is going to be the psychological aspect, the mental aspect, because that affects everything else. So I don't care what the data says. I don't care what the numbers say. I don't care what the whatever. So the first option would be how a scientist would approach this. What, what a scientist does is they change one variable and try to keep everything else the same. But you're not a lab rat that we can control perfectly where how you feel doesn't matter. You're going to do what I tell you to do. The, the psychological aspect is is massive. It can't be overstated. So uh, that's why I say that's one of the main reasons why I switched to the second approach. Even with myself, Adam said he does this with himself. I do it myself and I know what's going to happen. I know it's going to mess with my head, but I still do it. Uh, I, so I still uh, uh, change it in a way that, where it'll help me psychologically because I know what's going to happen and I can anticipate it's going to happen. So so well, yeah, it can't be overstated. I, I saw in your question too, Have you, you've never run a MAPS program yet? No, he did. So yeah, and I, I actually, I kind of changed how I asked my question because when I emailed this in, um, I had never run a MAPS program. And uh, actually around December, so around the holiday time, I actually let my trainer go and I actually switched to running a MAPS program. Okay. Mm -hmm. So part of my original question was asking like, hey, should I stick with my virtual trainer who this, this is somebody who uh, they worked at the gym I worked at, but like I wasn't seeing them in person. I was doing like a once a week virtual check-in with them. Sure. I could send them videos of me doing the exercises and they would critique them. They had a really nice app that they had made for their, their program. So that, that part was good. Um, I felt they were a little pushy with doing a meal program with me that kind of became like the, the focus of like every check-in for the last three months, um, which I guess I wasn't a cut. So that makes sense. Um, and my, one of my questions was, Hey, should I stick with this trainer or should I switch to a maps program? Well, yeah, definitely. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to switch to the MAPS program. I'm also going to tell you this. I'm going to put have Doug put you in the forum, and you'll get that. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. One of the ways that people use the forum the most is exactly what you just said, is they will video themselves doing movements, and then within – Five minutes, you'll get a bunch of other coaches, trainers, and ourselves. I'm, look, I'm going to get a lot. Of, I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying this, okay? But a virtual trainer or coach, most of their value is going to be with diet. Mm -hmm. When it comes to training, in person is what you want. An in person trainer who's good. I don't have a maps program that can compete with a good in person trainer for exercise. But a virtual trainer with workouts, it's better than nothing for sure. But it's 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 not uh, the the value of them virtually is mostly going to be diet. It's not going to be the workout stuff. I mean, that, the idea of maps programs was to compete with the virtual type coaching right. and training. It was not to compete with in person training. That you've always well, you've only been listening for a year, but we've been saying that since we've started this. That yeah. a a good a really good one of us in person 
could never compete with the virtual version of us. Just can't because that's real time. I can mm -hmm. I can ask you how you slept last night, how you're <clears> feeling right now. I can see the way your body's moving, and I can make you can't on, do that virtually on the fly adjustments based off of what I see real time. And just no virtual coach can do that. None of us can. It's just you're unless they're following you around with a camera and you're you're literally Even posting then, there's in something the end. missing. Yeah, it's just not the same as having that in person. So an in person good coach is better than the best maps program, but. I guarantee you that MAPS program with the forum access that I'm giving you yeah, right now will outcompete anybody that's doing anything virtually for you. Yeah, that, that would be huge. I mean, the switch over to MAPS has been actually really, really great for me. The only thing that I was missing was being able to do like a, a quick on the spot check in of is this movement good, yeah. which now I've been working out for a year and a half. I'm kind of getting past that point yeah. of like needing to check every single exercise. You, you yeah. po post the video of them yeah. in, the, in the forum. Yep. You'll get lots of feedback. There's oh. lots of trainers and coaches. That's how them. most people use it actually right yep. now is to do forum totally. check. That's awesome. Well, yep. thanks guys. I really appreciate it. You got it, man. All right. No, thanks we'll for calling in. See you in the forum. Yep. Have a good one. You got it. You know, I got to make this point again. Everybody wants to do the thing that the data shows produces the 5% more, whatever. It's the psychological piece that you have to consider the most. The thing that you said, Adam, Mm-hmm is the most important thing that we said. I don't care if they're equal. It doesn't matter. Yep. If I can make the client feel better, then that's going to work better. It's just, just it's the bottom stick. line. It's a hundred percent bottom line. And, and what you were talking about, the strength gains during the cut because it's a new exercise. Those are CNS adaptations. They also matter. Will you build more muscle? Probably. But even if you don't going into your workouts on a cut and seeing improvements uh, in your strength or reps, like, is that going to make this more sustainable? Oh, you better I, damn believe it. Th this is the difference of, I mean, and there, I feel like this generation, we've we've created even more of these trainers, right? That they, you know, and I'm not going to name drop the trainers that are famous on YouTube and, and that all they do is break down studies and they, yeah. and they, and they, they coach virtually from studies. And it's like, I, I, that's better than a guy who doesn't know anything, I guess. Sure. Yeah. But it's definitely not better than somebody who's trained that's hundreds or thousands of people in their lifetime and have already put all the studies to test yeah. and compared them to other things too, like the psychological piece. And your, your point, what I have found is that I don't care how good the study is. If I notice that it, it messes with my client psychologically, that makes a bigger difference on our total results. I don't care what the studies say. That's right, yeah. So that always gets factored. And then when you talk about something like this, where it's kind of a splitting hair difference, like, oh uh, yeah, we could train this way where we don't change any variables and just the diet, or we can switch it up. There's not even like I guarantee if we took two test groups that did the difference there, you would see minimal to not much change. But I guarantee if we dove into the psychology, yeah, which one do you like? Which one did you yes, enjoy? Which one do you want to do more? Right. 100%. Then you would notice a difference. Our next caller is Anthony from Florida. Anthony, what's going on, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? I appreciate you having me on. Um, I love the podcast. You guys have given me a lot of great information. Just in this past few weeks, I, I actually just recently found you guys about a month ago and uh, I found you at like the perfect time. So I'm going to give you like a quick background before I just jump into the, the questions that I had. But basically, like, you know, I've kind of been in and out of the gym um, pretty much my whole life. But um, I got to a point where, you know, I have young kids. Um, my work kind of got crazy. I just got completely like out of shape for a while. And, um, you know, I'm 5'8 and I got up to like 245 pounds. Like I was just kind of a mess, you know, and, uh, finally some things changed and I was able to really start taking care of myself. I, I had some time work got a little bit better for me. So as soon as that happened, I was like, all right, time to get back into the gym, take care of myself. And, um, uh, I did the only thing I knew how to do, which was kind of just like jump right into a cut. Um, so in one year I, I cut the whole time. I didn't like go in and out or take any breaks. Like I probably should have, uh, just for lack of knowledge. And, um, I went from 245 down to about 185 in that year. Um, started off, obviously my calories were fairly high at the time and I got down to like 1900 calories. And, um, that was like probably about a month ago. And like, I just got to this point, like my workouts were just absolutely terrible. I felt like crap. Um, I didn't even want to, my, like I was weak. I didn't even really want to work out anymore. And I kind of knew in that moment, like, all right, I need to eat more or, or something's going on. So I started doing a little bit of research and that's right when I found like, you guys talking about reverse dieting. So like that day, I literally went from 1900 calories to 2300 calories in within 24 hours. Like I felt just so much better just from that, that, uh, increase in my cal decrease in my calories right there. And then, um, so I kind of stuck with that cause I, cause I was like learning about the reverse diet and I didn't want to jump too fast. Um, so I, I did about, I'd say about 20 days at 2300 calories and 
I actually lost weight. Um, I went from 188 and now I'm down to 183. Um, after about 15 days of that, I jumped up to 2,700. My strength just skyrocketed. My, my workouts got so much better. Um, everything just started getting better. So that kind of brought me into, you know, my questions were basically like, as far as reverse dieting, am I going too slow? Should I be eating a lot more than I even am? Um, I'm somebody that works out five to six days a week, an, an hour of, of just straight lifting. Um, and then that brings me to my next question is, am I even working out the correct way for my body at this point? Well, how, how is your progress uh, in the gym? Are you getting stronger? Yeah. And especially just in this last, like just since I, I up my calories, like everything's just gotten a lot stronger. I feel a lot better. Um, my energy is a lot better. Um, Anthony, like I said, but, but for some reason I lost weight still. So. Anthony, if you're, if you're, if you're getting stronger and your weight is staying the same or going down, you are, you're building muscle and getting leaner, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's what, spot. so that's what has happened. That's by fire. The way, is that you're, you increase calories, you built muscle that sped up your metabolism, meaning now your body wants more calories. And right. so just keep doing that incrementally. I think you're doing, um, I would love to, I would love to put you on one of our programs yeah. just cause we're kind of good at that. Um, and if, you know, not to say that what you're doing is wrong, but I think that if we set you up with something, I think between that and what you're doing, reverse dieting, I think you're going to see tremendous a results. Great combo. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the, yeah, no, that's I, tell me a little bit about the way you do these training. I see it's a training split. It looks like upper body chest shoulders and then you do like a tell me a little bit about your split so i know what program i think we'll yeah so do. so for like the for like the first like probably eight months i was like exactly what you guys call like the bro lifter like i would just go in and do i would just smash chest for an hour and then the next day i would smash back for an hour you know mm -hmm. and uh and I, and I would just do like tons of different sets like way over the top probably way too much and then i got to the point where i was like all right i'm gonna start doing like some type of splits and, and i started doing like chest shoulders and triceps one day and but i was still I still was probably doing like way more sets of each thing than I necessarily needed to. Um, and then I would do back buys and traps and then I would go into legs and stuff like that. Um, and then since listening to you guys, like I've been adding in a couple of, uh, so I'll start my week off with a full body workout and then I'll do a chest split with the shoulders and the tries and then I'll do the back and the buys and then I'll do a leg day and then I'll jump back into a full body kind of workout routine and then oh, give, you know usually take the weekends off and you're getting and you're getting strong um, and you're getting stronger well, like and I improving. Said, I, yeah i'm definitely getting stronger and, and, I, and i and that's my issue is like I, I i have this horrible like and i know it's wrong but i have this like mental block that like if i if i'm in the gym for an hour and i don't feel like i feel like i can keep going i'm like oh i didn't do enough you know what i mean yeah, and, yeah. and i know that's actually wrong but I have that hard time of being like, okay, like I, I'm, I'm overdoing it. And I kind of felt yesterday for the first time, like that I might've been like going a little bit too hard. Cause it was like, you know, my, my calories are up. I, it was the first day, first time in a while that I've kind of felt like, Oh, I don't really want to be here, but I kind of pushed through it. I just did like a really, really light weight workout and like just lifted slow and kind of concentrated on like the movements more. Anthony, this bit the, dramatic. Uh, <laughs> bro, we're looking at a picture. Said. Hold on a second. The picture you sent us, is that recent? Yeah, that was a couple days ago. Yeah, yeah bro, you're jacked, <laughs> bro, you're, bro. You're jacked. You're jacked, dude. Are you na are you na you train naturally? You no, he's on, he's on TRT. Um, you're so on TRT, I, right? I, I, yeah, I put in that. Yeah, my my levels when I first started getting back to the gym, like they were just like incredibly low. I went to the doctor and they were like, you definitely need to be on it. So so I do TRT, um, and it you know definitely changed everything about like my energy and just like it made me like honestly like I I was just like wasn't sure about it, but like since doing it like even just being a husband and a father like around the house like i just feel so much better you know so yeah. like i was like all right, all right. Yeah. i got a pro you know? i got a program for you let's go maps anabolic advanced i think you'll love that program okay. you obviously can handle yeah. the volume the intensity so i'll send you that program and that'll 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 you'll like it and i would bump your okay. calories again let's go yeah. let's go up another 300 yep. calories that, so yep. where you're at i'm looking at your physique right now you're in a great place and Bro. the goal now is literally so it's gonna sound crazy but the goal is uh, where i want you to be is to be able to do less work and eat more calories and maintain that physique and that's that right. is possible i can keep you looking that good increase your okay. calories significantly more and have you doing probably half the work you're doing right now so that's the goal. Yeah. The goal should be that. So not how much can of a beating you can take in your workouts. It's more like, can I slowly keep increasing these calories while backing off the amount of hammering myself and, and continue to maintain this physique? Like that is possible. Yeah. You do maps anabolic advanced okay. with a, with a 300 calorie bump. You're going to, you're probably going to put another yeah. five pounds of lean body mass on. Yeah. You're doing good, bro.
Okay, cool. Yeah, because I know, because like since listening to you guys, like I, I definitely was somebody that like neglected um, doing like bar squats and uh, like deadlifts, mostly because I had a, a back injury when I was completely out of shape. But like I feel great now, but I'm like, you know, the more I hear you guys talk about it, the more I'm doing it. And like I'm, I feel really strong in every way. And then I do those exercises. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm not that strong. But but I'm just trying to really like learn those routines. Like that's those, good. Yeah. Bro, take, that's take your time with that. Yeah. Now. That's oh, perfect. That, bro, that's yeah. exciting. Let Jesus take, Christ. You know, and you're, and you're not good at those lifts. So much potential. It, yeah, you're going you're gonna to put to more than five pounds of lean yeah. body. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that to the goal, right? Is to just be a good deadlifter. Like, yeah. the, like that's the other goal. I'm going to add to what I just said originally to you. Is like, yeah. if you do take the things the I said down and, focus on that. and get just good at deadlifting, watch the gains you're going to get just from yeah. that and training that way. Yeah, so. yeah 300 okay. calorie surplus, follow anabolic advanced. I predict by the end of it, five at least five pounds of lean body mass. Okay. And so my only other question would be like, as far as, as far as that program, um, so the gym I work out, they don't, they only have a Smith machine. Like, is it doable to do this stuff on a Smith machine or should I go to a new gym? Uh, is it, is it feasible for you to go to a new gym? Yeah. I mean, it's more just convenience. Like I got young kids and you yeah. know, I already feel guilty, like leaving my wife home with, with our kids. So like, I try to make it as, as, um, you know, as quick and, and, but whatever, like at the end of the day, like it's not going to make, like, yeah, I can change gyms. That's yeah, I, 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 I think, it would, I mean, you could substitute exercises. Okay. But, um, you know, you know, deadlifting, barbell squatting without a Smith machine, it's a different exercise. Yeah. 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 Right. I would either do it's that or thing. literally invest in just a barbell and some plates so you could deadlift at home because yeah. that's all you need. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. So that's also a possibility. Like, I, so I have like a, a real basic setup at my house, but I still have a gym membership. So sometimes I'll just do my squatting and deadlifting yep, at home, yep. but then I'll do my other, you know, yeah. machine exercise exercises, all that bullshit. I'll do at the gym. But it, yeah. so that's not a bad investment, and it's not crazy ridiculous yeah, just to get a bar, barbell and stuff. No, that's worth. It. I actually was thinking about that because my wife's due with our third kid in in a couple of weeks, and I kind of felt like I'm probably not going to be leaving the house as much. So maybe oh, maybe that's oh, a good yeah, time for me to really bro. Check out life so saver, go saver, go yeah. to go to mindpumppartners.com. Scroll down to okay. P scroll down so mindpumppartners.com. We'll send you the link, and then yeah. scroll okay. down to PRX. PRX makes a sick thing that you can like hang on your wall so you can literally still park your cars in the garage you can still have all this space it's a squat rack that folds into the wall yeah, and it's yeah. it's, it's it's more oh, yeah, yeah, i know what it is yeah oh yeah, yeah. you'll like and it. and they do a thing on there to where it's like payment plans like a gym and they compare it to a gym membership so like they're literally like buy all this equipment and you'll pay your monthly payments just like you're having a gym membership and now you have your gym in your house right and then it gets paid right, off right, and then right. you're done so yeah. that that's if you did the whole gym but even if you just did the barbell and weights they have a sick ass thing that the barbell and the weights go in the wall so it's like super clean inside your garage yeah, yeah Nice. Is, okay. You got what is this baby number three coming? Yeah, my third daughter. Oh, oh three, three girls. girls, man. Three girls. Yeah. You know, uh, you know what that means, right? You know, you know, you the, know what yeah. that means. It means you were probably a playboy when you're in your in your single. Yeah. Why does God, do, <laughs> God, God does that a little bit? Isn't that crazy? Is that yeah, every one yeah, of yeah. every one of my boys that was a playboy has got three girls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I got to get. That's why I got to get into good shape because when that first guy comes knocking on my door that's to take right. my daughter, that's out, right. I be like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I know, guy. Let's go. Right hey, hey, daughters are the best, man. God bless right. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, appreciate it. All you right, got Anthony. It. All right, um, Anthony. And so just my last quick thing was like the only thing I felt like I I, I lack in progress in like for the amount of chest I do. I feel like everything's growing, but I, I have a hard time seeing like the improvements of my chest getting bigger. Do you think just by doing this new program, like I'm that's just not even going to be yeah, an issue? The, like, yeah, I, don't need to let, I think so. Yeah, okay. let, let's stick with that now. And then if you're still yeah. feeling that way after this program, hit us back yeah. up and then we'll talk about what to do Run next. Run it all the way through and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, Anthony. Yeah. All right, man. All right, appreciate it, guys. Right. Talk to you later. All right, bye. What a transformation pick. Dude, I know. He pulled Super out. Super impressive. Like, bro, yeah. well, you, could, you know, you just see his face, you know, but the yeah. transfer, and he said he's, he weighed the same. Well, it, I, I mean, know. holy That's, shit. Yeah. And he and he said he lost 60 pounds right over the last Talk year. So I was, I, was I was expecting him to kind of have that look of somebody who just lost 60 yeah. pounds. Well, because so. then there was another before and after where it looked like he had lost the weight and then he started lifting. Yeah. And he built a ton of muscle and lost more body fat. Yeah. That's incredible. It's all there, man. Yeah, yeah incredible. I mean, you know, and the fact that he can handle what he's doing now and he's improving. You bump the calories, do anabolic event. He's going to, I said five pounds, but I wouldn't be surprised if you put more on. No, no. He'll probably put Lean more body on. Mass. Our next caller is Daniel from Australia. Daniel, what's happening? How are you guys? Thanks so much for taking my call. I've uh, been listening to you guys for, for a while now, for a few years, and I've just uh, yeah, love the work you guys do in the fitness and health space. So great job. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Um, so just a bit of background to my question. After a fair few years of groundwork, I finally managed to get my wife to do some strength training with me. Um, she was previously into the classic calorie cuts, running through body composition changes, and I finally managed to get her, along with cardio, and I finally managed to get her to do some strength training with me, and we ran through anabolic twice. So she's motivated to go um, basically for, for success with uh, how clothes fit in before and after pics. Whereas me, I'm more of a numbers guy and I want to see the bar increase. So my goal for her is to get her as strong as possible and just trust the process that the physical goals and body recomposition is going to uh, come with the result of uh, the work that she's put in. So my question is that we still want to do a little bit of cardio. So on potentially on trigger days and on days that we can't lift. And I know what you guys think about cardio, but for us, it's more the reason why I'd like to do the cardio is to do um, just bit of cardiovascular health. I'm a physical education teacher in high school. I don't want to get gassed when I'm playing basketball with yeah. kids at school yeah. and scrimmage yeah. and stuff like that. So my question is, what about anaerobic activities? Can doing some high intensity um, cardio assist in fat burning, but preserving muscles? So basically short interval sprints, 85% to 100% of your max heart rate, your work to rest ratio intervals of you know one to five sort of a thing and getting those intervals going. So we're currently doing MAPS performance with the goal of pulling on some uh, some muscle, but I'm just yeah, interested in the cardio and especially the uh, anaerobic activity cardio and want to know what you guys would think. Great I, question. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't do, I don't ever do cardio with the goal of fat loss, but if the goal is health or longevity or stamina or endurance, excellent. cardio yeah. is amazing. If you're looking for athletic performance type stamina, then high intensity interval style cardio is probably best, right? So sprints or interval type training. Yeah. If you're looking for longevity, active, just movement, um, then you know low intensity type cardio is fine uh, for that kind of stuff. Walking, hiking, even long distance running, if it's appropriate for you, is totally fine. Uh, as far as fat burning is concerned, uh, don't do cardio for fat burning. Now, which one of those is the most muscle preserving? Well, it's going to be the one that's most like strength training which is going to be the high-intensity style. One thing I'll tell you, though, Daniel, to keep in mind, though, is high-intensity interval training style cardio, like sprinting, it can start to dip into your body's ability to recover because it's intense. So just pay attention to that, right? Is it is it starting to add too much stress to your body? Do you have to compensate by reducing volume and other parts of your training type of deal? That would be the only thing I, I, I would the say. The other thing I would add to that is uh, stay fed. Fed before and after. So like whenever I was trying to, like I, I played basketball while I was also trying to change my body and my physique. And so, because I loved playing the sport, right? Although I knew that all that basketball playing was not serving my bodybuilding goals, right? I knew it wasn't yeah, helping yeah. that, but I loved playing basketball and I didn't want to not be able to play a pickup game on Saturdays because I was so out of shape. So I, I played. So for me, before and after I played, I would always get, I would drink like a liquid within 30 minutes of me playing. I would drink three, 400 calories liquid that I'd get into my system. And then as soon as I was done, I would make sure I, I fed the body. That way I wasn't in this like depleted state while also pushing really hard in cardio. So that'll just, that'll help. Okay. That's better. So it's not going to, it's not going to hurt the, the, the muscle goals or I know there's also like, you know, fart like training. If you go for the, you know, it's like a continuous run, but where you're doing the, the high intervals during your continuous run would, is that something I, I don't want, you don't want to hurt the gains, but um, I also want to get that cardiovascular. The, the way which, that it could hurt the gains is if it compromises your body's ability to uh, recover and adapt. Okay. Now I want to say this too, just also overarching. Takes, also, if it takes you out of a, a caloric maintenance. Or yeah. Surplus. So like, here's the, here, I want to say this. Okay. Overarching. If adding cardio improves somebody's health, it could very well improve their ability to build muscle. And I want to say that for the people watching who like to like comment and say a bunch of stupid stuff. So now that being said, you're already obviously healthy. You're already obviously working out. You're doing great. So this added cardio, is it going to improve your health? Probably not, but it will improve your performance. Um, with stamina, but it probably will take away a little bit of your ability uh, with your strength training. So it's going to be a bit of a trade. How much of a trade? I don't know. But if you if you value the stamina and endurance and the time with your wife doing this kind of stuff, yeah. I mean, who cares? Yeah, and I think uh, I think a lot of people don't realize. Like, so if we increase the number of reps that you're doing with a lot of these exercises, like your heart rate's going to go up. You're getting a lot of cardiovascular endurance type benefit. Um, even just from from changing your rep range around. And so, you know, a lot of those same kind of traits and benefits for longevity and health, you're going to receive from that too. Uh, you're doing performance, which is addressing a lot of movement specific 
um, yeah. you know, reinforcing your joints and making sure like you're able bodied and athletic, uh, in terms of the actual overall, like stamina, cardiovascular side of that, you know, if you, if you can, can kind of undulate that in blocks, like how it's kind of laid out in the program, like you're going to be just fine. You're going to be able to maintain and keep a pretty, a pretty, pretty nice stamina throughout like your, uh, you know, if you're running around with kids and all that, like it's still going to be there. Yeah, are Jack you, are you and the wife in a, a calorie surplus or maintenance or deficit? What are you guys running yeah, right now? Diet wise? We're, we're, tr we're trying to be sort of in that maintenance too. I've been bumping her from a few sort of going into to surplus into a few little cuts and then into a surplus. So oh, yeah, we're, um, yeah, sort of doing sort of like a, a four to six weeks in one and then dropping down into another for another sort of four to six okay. weeks. And then yeah. just, just mixing it up a little bit so Here, right now we're, we're pretty much in a surplus i think here's what i would say too it's like if you guys enjoy if you're like a fitness couple you love working out together you really enjoy this you like the stamina that comes from athletic performance here's what i'll tell you to do on those days find something you enjoy doing together mm -hmm. whether it be a sport or hey let's go run on the beach or let's do this like really challenging hike do that instead and you'll get better results from doing that just because of the enjoyment than trying to tie it to fat loss because that, that can be kind of a losing battle. Um, and people and, and when you're doing it out of enjoyment, it kind of self-modulate, you know, you, you tend to modulate it naturally. And that's what I would recommend, especially because you're doing it together. So rather than being like, okay, we need to do this specific workout, whatever, say, hey, Thursday, let's go do that that crazy hike that we've wanted to do, or let's go right. let's go to that beach Get or up you know, some pickleball. Yeah, or let's go play a sport, like have fun with it. Yep. The, the real yep. the real uh, challenge or juggle here is, it, and it has everything to do with like how much of that attribute you want, right? Like Sal was kind of uh, alluding to this where it's like, if you want to be really good at playing the sport and having stamina, then it's going to take a little bit away from our building muscle. It's just a fact. Like, will it yep. completely stop it? No, not necessarily. But it could if you're doing a ton with the weight training and you're doing a ton with that. And so one of them needs to scale back a little bit. And you just yep. need to decide. So if you end up finding yourself where you're like, man, you're really in, and this is how I'd have to juggle like basketball. Like there'd be times where I'm playing once a week or once every other week. And so I just need to maintain enough uh, stamina to where I don't get my ass kicked when I get on the court. Then there was other times where I was playing three times a week. Well, the times where I was ramping up and I'm playing three times a week, I had to scale back on the strength training because yeah. mm -hmm. lifting more weights was not benefiting me having more muscle. Although people don't think of it that way. They think, oh my God, I'm lifting less weights. How could that be serving me with building muscle? Well, it is if you're also doing a ton of cardio and stamina. You, play with well, you know, it's interesting yeah. when I, I was like experimenting that with like getting back into like rec basketball and like trying to, you know, move around. What was really the most fatiguing was the unfamiliarity with the movements. And so for me, focusing more on mobility ability and, and reinforcing a lot of those like rotational movements, yeah. lateral movements, things like that. My body got less, uh, you know, I didn't have to, uh, expend as much well, energy to produce the better, yeah. the better skill you have with the movement, the less tiring and exhausting it's going to be. And, and, and this yeah. is just, I mean, obviously, right. If you are really bad at a movement and you go try and do it, you're going to exert a lot of energy trying to do it. The body yeah. starts to become very efficient. So Justin's point is like, I mean, it's 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 beautiful because uh, if you're trying to get more stamina for a specific type of sport, well, playing that sport will do better than anything. Yep. Well, it's it, yeah, it's more just I want to get her as 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 strong as possible and put on some muscle because I know that's you know obviously yeah. all the the health benefits of that and that's also the best for body recomposition because um, she wants to just sort of lean out a little bit. But for me, it's more just for the cardiovascular aspects and just for the odd, you know, the pickup basketball game at, at school or something like that. So yeah. I'm not like looking yeah. to be a, an athlete. Um, but I am looking at the priority is to, to, to put on muscle and strength and then, but I do want that cardiovascular aspect so that you just don't get gassed. So, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, go, so it sounds like go have fun yep. with it then. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help. Appreciate it. You got All it, right, man. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Cool. See ya. I want to talk to that point that you made, Justin, they've done studies on this. Well, they'll take, uh, extremely high level, incredible VO two max athletes with incredible endurance mm -hmm. and they'll have them do their chosen, the sport that they yeah, compete and they'll in do the and they'll switch to something. And then their calorie expenditure goes through the roof and their ability to perform it I drops think, significantly. And, yeah. You know, and it's weird that, I mean, I just kind of thought of that because even, um, even if you're doing something silly, like a wee boxing or, you know, or like something that's like you, you wouldn't do normally, but man, why am I so tired? Totally. So exhausted. Totally. It's just, you're just, your body, you haven't trained that way with your body yet. So your body has to expend a bit more energy to be able to uh, recognize it. hundred percent. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. 
Check out all of our free fitness guides. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 